There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're worth. Uh, I kind of will take anything at this point as long as they're out of my backyard. I bought amazing Gulf oil sign. I had it shipped to get restored. Pretty amazing, huh? It's big, man. Where are we going to put it? Ask Rick if I got a great. Elias Ashmole, Theatrum Chemicum Britannicum, is the secret to creating the Philosopher's Stone. What's this? There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're worth. Uh, I kind of will take anything at this point as long as they're out of my backyard. These are different. Tell me what you got. Two Russian Cossack Shashka swords. I'm asking $2,000 for each sword. Really kind of crazy. You know, the Cossacks, they were a big deal military organization. I mean, they were pretty badass. I have some political memorabilia, a Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath. Okay. His White House pass. Oh, that's cool. The Attorney General of the United States, J. Howard McGrath. I really don't know what they're worth, but we'll see how it goes. These are just like the fins that would help guide it to where it needed to be. So where'd you get these, man? Well, they were kind of sitting in my dad's backyard and ended up getting them at my house somehow. How much does it weigh? 50, 60 pounds. Yeah, I've never had these come in before. Corey needs to figure out what to do with the giant bomb fins, so he chooses to get help from an expert and Rick. I got a buddy that might know. I think my dad would probably like to check them out too. That sounds good. These are actually conical fins off low drag general purpose bombs. These conical fins got put in use from Vietnam on. You strap this onto the tail section of a bomb and it provides a predictable glide path for the bomb. In 2003 in Iraq, this is what we were using. Obviously the accuracy is in there, but it's just so much cheaper. Uh, the laser guided bombs, you know, you can't actually drop through clouds. The expert educates Rick and Corey about the details of the bomb fins and Rick is concerned about the legality of the war items. The expert suggests a price for the collectibles and negotiations begin. It's not illegal to own these things or anything, is it? No, they are out there. Not very common. The smaller one, just because it's got more uses. You no know, commercial value, five, six hundred dollars in that range. Okay. So let's talk money. We're in the twelve hundred range. Maybe like four hundred bucks for him, man. No. Seven. No. No. Four hundred bucks or nothing. Four hundred then. <laughs> Elias Ashmole, Theatrum Chemicum Britannicum, is the secret to creating the Philosopher's Stone. The secret manuscript to create gold. This is a book on alchemy. What is alchemy? The art of transmutating metals. Sweet. I know a little bit about this book. Rick knows about the book a little, so he talks about it. It was illegal and it was printed. All of countries of Europe believe the gold in their treasuries would be worthless. So it's a very interesting history. The owner explains a few things about the book to Chum and Rick. This diagram here, key to all the secrets, the Ninth Gate movie with Johnny Depp. The Ninth Gate is a fictional reinterpretation, the Twelfth Gate. Really, really cool. The expert is called in and the book is evaluated further. How much do you want for it? $23,000. I need someone to look at. That's great. Here it is. I know this book. About 1,500 alchemical works were not printed. There's only a small circle. Kept this among themselves. Okay. What kind of condition do you think it's in? Let's see. The folding plate, which most copies don't. That said, a full page engraved is supposed to go here. After taking a careful look at the book, the expert recommends a price. So what do you think it's worth? Copies that are incomplete with 10,000 or less. This one, with all the repairs, missing a plate, 15,000. You're the best. The negotiations begin, and the deal is sealed. I absolutely love this. I'll give you nine thousand dollars for it. How about twelve? No, I'll give you ten grand for it. That's... How about ten thousand five? I'll give you ten thousand three. I'll take it. Sweet. Great. I actually make gold with this. Corey greets a guy who has brought Russian Cossack swords to the shop to sell. These are different. Tell me what you got. Two Russian Cossack Shashka swords. I'm asking $2,000 for each sword. Really kind of crazy. You know, the Cossacks, they were a big deal military organization. I mean, they were pretty badass. Corey discloses that the swords have been banned by the law. These have been banned by the Geneva Convention. You're not allowed to put these on a gun anymore. Oh, the bayonet? Multiple sides instead of just a knife. Go in you, they would make like a little star hole in you. Yeah, war was brutal back then. Corey asks for an offer and invites an expert to the shop to evaluate the swords further. Looking to get $2,000 a piece. So $4,000? Okay, um, don't know much about Russian history at all. Have somebody that can come down and take a look at them. Sounds good. What I have to tell you, what we have here, an interesting mix. Bayonet are right. The blades, the sheaths, reproduction. The shashkas are reproduction. They're modern. Sorry about that, but good all to good. take a look at them. It happens. The expert takes a closer look at the blades, and they turn out to be artificial. You heard what Mark had to say. The reproductions, I was going to kind of have to pass on the whole deal. Take care. Thanks so much. I think they do look really cool. Still make some great wall hangers at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? Pedro Federberg. Who's that? A pretty big deal in the 70s. A realist artist. <laughs> 
find it to be truly unique. Rick finds the art piece very fascinating and wants to make a deal with the owner. This is really intriguing. How much do you want for it? 18 to 20,000. Okay. Is it signed by him? It's right here in the back by his neck. He's still popular. What this thing is worth? No idea. I think it'll sell. Let me have someone take a look at it. All right, I'm gonna go make a phone call. As per ritual, an expert is called into the shop to evaluate the item and recommend an appropriate price for it. Pedro Friedeberg, all right. He did a lot of kind of semi-functional art chair that was the you know, shape of a hand. He was a hand chair guy. He used to call it anti-art for art's sake. It really caught on. Rick mentions his concerns about the item to the expert. These cards are all faded out. This was by a window, chips on it, wax everywhere. What would something like this be worth with the damage? A piece like this, $20,000, somewhere in there. It's a neat piece. Rick tries to negotiate the price. What would you realistically take for it? 18,000 for it. That's not gonna happen. I would give you eight grand. We can make halfway. Um, how about 50? There's no money in it for me then. What is your best price? Fall. It, Very unique. Beautiful, I don't know. <laughs> I go eleven. I can't. If you change your mind. All right, have a good one, man. I feel a little disappointed. Had my heart set on selling it. I have here an Egyptian scarab ring, and I'd like to know if this is the real thing or not. Rick picks up this ring and checks it out. He confirms it is truly a scarab ring. He explains its existence. Okay, it's a scarab. Way back in Egypt, everybody had one. Rick is sure this is a scarab ring but he isn't sure if it is really as old as it should be. It looks like an old scarab, but the question is, is it really 3,000 years old? The owner also gave him a card from one of the sellers. Well, that is the card from the guy that sold it over in. And how much would that be for? I would like 15,000. The Egyptians put the scarab on rings, they put it on necklaces, and even on the entryways to the Egyptian temples. That's how important of a symbol the scarab was. Can you see the rope work on there? That sort of gold work is very indicative of like turning of the century. So this is probably a real scarab though. I think that is a real scarab. It looks 3,000 years old. Okay, so what do you think it's worth? Mm, 250. Oh, 250 mm -hmm. plus like $200 in gold. So you're looking at right around 450 to 500 dollars. Thanks, man. Okay. You're the best. Thank you very much. I would give you right around 350 dollars for it. 500. No. <laughs> 375. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I will give you 360 bucks. All right, I'll take it. We got a deal then. This man came in with some Tori Hanzo swords signed by David Kearney. Tori Hanzo sword signed by David Kearney. The movie Kill Bill. They all had really weird names. Black Mamba, kind of silly. <laughs> I used to collect swords. Now they're just collecting dust. I'm looking to get about 2200 Corey talks about how the movie Kill Bill saved David from being deeply broke. The guy was pretty much broke. He didn't really get paid all that much for it. Kind of brought him back into the limelight. Corey also talks about how the movie was made four hours long, cut into two parts, and how it killed it at the box office. The movie was four hours. The studio released it in two different parts. Killed it at the box office. Can I take a look at them? No, go ahead. And they're made in China. Any idea of how much you want for them? 2200 These were going for about 80 bucks a piece. Let me have a buddy of mine come down and he can tell me what the deal is, all right? All right. What are your concerns, Corey? Before he died, they were going for like 80 bucks. Well, yeah, that's usually the thing. I want to just take a look. That's the first one. Kind of exact pattern on there. Definite live. You could see here an authentic example. Big D here. Signatures match perfectly. So what do you think they're worth? Are they cool? Absolutely. Right about $600. Better than what it was. Thank you. Yep, good luck. 200 bucks for them. 1200 it'd be like my bottom. We're not going to be able to make a deal. Thanks. Take care. Have a good one. In my opinion, these are worth much, much more. This is pretty amazing. Do you know anything about it? Displayed Toy Fair in New York City. It is the only carded rocket firing Boba Fett. Back in 1979, they promoted this figure, projects and shoot tiny rocket out of its back. At the last minute, Kenner realized is a choking hazard. Go down a child's throat and they could choke to death on it. Rick asks for an offer and a Star Wars expert is called to the shop to evaluate the item. What price do you want? $150,000. Let me call my Star Wars nerd. Love to meet him. So is it real? There's no doubt about it. This is the holy grail. It's Correct. right here, and it's in your store. What do you think I could sell it for? I mean, it's one of one we're talking about here. Uh, minimal under $25,000. Thank you. No problem. Rick tries to bargain, but he can't succeed in making a deal with the owner. I'm going to buy this to resell it. I understand. I'd give you 100 grand for it. I can't do 100 grand. If you change your mind, I got 100 grand. I thank you very much for the offer. Thanks for coming in, though, man. I cannot accept. Uh, Purchasing this sword. Oh, wow. Are you a closet samurai? <laughs> Rick and Chum Lee inspect the katana closely. You mind if I take it apart? Please. There's a little excitement in here. Check out the blade on that sword. What have I taught you over the years? What have you taught me? Not to touch that with your hand. But what can you tell me about this, Chum? What do you know about it? Pretty old. Looks pretty nice. An out of line boss once or twice in its time. An expert arrives to take a look at the katana before making an offer. 
Seen anything good? Very interesting. During the 1800s, a civil war going on, given to the Lord of Choshu. Protect Japan. Okay, so question, what's it worth? $10,000. Wow. And the negotiations begin. I have to make money on it. Five? Can you make money at that? I don't take advantage of people. $5,000 is just too low. I will give you $6,000 for it. $6,000 okay. is great. All right. Thank you. Crazy fish sculpture. Jim Henson original. How many famous puppeteers do you know? Jim Henson. <laughs> I'm looking to get $15,000. I know we was doing it before he was even a teenager. The owner gives some background information on the sculpture. It's dated 1974. My husband was in an electronics store. He was told it was a Jim Henson. Okay. Yeah. Corey checks the item out and asks for a price. Any idea what you're looking to get? 15000 Okay. Um, I just so happened to have met Vice President of the Jim Henson Corporation. Do you mind if I uh, snap some and send them to her? That'd be great. Corey takes some pictures of the sculpture and calls the expert over to the shop. I'm excited for the expert to come in today. It's all the mystery whether or not they're really a Jim Henson original. <laughs> Did you would know? Ever see anything like this? Jim Henson's work, not out in the public. We have careful records of everything. Most of it is in museums. We really look through all of our records. I can say with certainty, definitely not part of any of Jim's work. Okay. Thank you so much for coming down. Nice to meet you. The sculpture turns out to be another mystery, and no deal is made for it. How much do you love your fit? <laughs> I'm just going to have to go ahead and pass. Thank you so much for bringing it down. Okay. I'm disappointed. Probably take it back home, put it in our house book. Never seen one with her head and neck in that position. Probably weighs five to eight pounds. Well, I'm asking $50,000 for it. Can't find anything even similar. To Where'd you get it? Bought it about 22 years ago. I've had it ever since. Do you know much about it? I know it's turquoise. Origin is unknown. I love horses. Rick knows a little about about the item, so he discusses it with the owner. They've been carving things out of turquoise for thousands of years. Real expensive marble. The less imperfections, the better. It's like a composite stone. It can be anywhere from blue color to a green color. It's not a pure stone. A lot of different shades on it. Pretty good shape. The owner knows nothing about the sculpture. Rick finally asks for an offer and decides to call his friend Bob to the shop to help him validate the item and suggest a price for it. I have no idea how old it is. That's why I'm here. How much do you want for it? 50 grand. 50,000. Okay. Let me call my buddy Bob and um, he's going to take a look at it. All right, I'll be right back. Can I take a look? Yes. It's an unsigned sculpture in the Chinese style, but it's not ancient. Time period lasts 50 years, probably. After taking a closer look at the item, the expert wants to check if the sculpture is authentic or not. But the problem in China, faking turquoise since the 1970s, there's a substance called magnezite, a fake turquoise. I'd like to make sure it really is turquoise. Do you mind if I no, zap it with some x-rays? Shin is done. 7% aluminum, 6% phosphorus, 5% copper. It is turquoise. Okay. Do you have any idea what something like this is worth? The expert suggests a good price for the turquoise, and Rick refuses to purchase the item. 7,000 bucks in turquoise. <sighs> Artistic value, you'd throw that on top. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. We don't know the artist. I think you're gonna have a really hard time selling it. I really wouldn't want it. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you. I'm still happy. Didn't pay a ton for it, but I still have a beautiful, beautiful piece. Chum took Rick out to a location to check out an item. So I'm taking Rick to this really cool prop house. I have a lead on a prop from the movie Terminator 3. I'm excited to see what he thinks. Whoa, this is crazy. Pretty cool, huh? Harvey, you here? Welcome, hi. This is my employee, Rick. All right. Rick tells them he can remember the movie where these props were used and starts to tell them the scene where he saw them. Terminator. It's pretty cool. I remember this in Skynet where they're going to build robot armies. These were all in the background. Does this turn into liquid? No, no, these are T-800s. T-1000s are liquid metal. Were used in the beginning of the film. Rick talks more about the movie, and Chum listens attentively. This is from the factory of Gynet, where they're making the robot soldiers. They used all kinds of parts to make these things, you know. Robot guts. They're full of rubber and metal. <sighs> Rick says once again that they are very cool and ask what the man wants to do with them. When the man says he wants to sell, Rick asks him how much. Are you looking to sell them or? They're all for sale, 5,500 piece. Let me give someone a call if they're definitely different. Great. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Someone else said it. <laughs> Hey, Harvey, nice to see you. You know about this, right? We're used in set dressing. This one I can't quite place. Camera only sees so much. Definitely on the set. What do you think these would be worth? Probably $3,500 a piece, $4,000 maybe. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me out. $5,500 for that one. Let me give you $2,500. bucks. i am going to resell it. It would be tough. I'll do thirty-eight. Three grand. There's no room after $3,000. <sighs> I'll go thirty-one. dollars Okay, it's a deal. Sweet. I told you you wouldn't regret it. Go ahead and load that in the truck. Harvey, you know I like you, so I'll be back. 
Good seeing you again. Thank you. I have some political memorabilia, a Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath. Okay. His White House pass. Oh, that's cool. The Attorney General of the United States, J. Howard McGrath. I really don't know what they're worth, but we'll see how it goes. Where did you get these? Bought them from his grandson. McGrath was the Attorney General. I don't think he was actually in the Secret Service. Being the Attorney General, he'd get any credentials he wanted. He was a power player in Washington politics. Truman picking him to be Attorney General? Cronyism, you think? <laughs> the owner gives a little background check on the bills, and Rick becomes hesitant to buy the credentials. A counterfeit $10 bill. They signed it to the Attorney General. You sure it's counterfeit? I don't know. Sometimes they screw up. Misprint bills can be worth a lot of money, but counterfeit money? Whole different story. So I'm assuming you can't own one. Um... Yeah, it's counterfeit. All American currency, they throw silk rags. So if you pick up a bill, little red blue lines all over it, it's not there, it's not real. I don't even think it's legal to own this thing. You just never see stuff like this. It scares the hell out of me. An expert is called in to check the legitimacy of the items and see whether this collection is legal to keep or not. Oh yes, this is his Secret Service credential. The embossing, the seal right on this, quite unusual. They either have a stripe across them because it's all completely intact. The expert educates Rick on the legality of the items and the deal proceeds. Is any of this stuff legal though? Having a White House pass, they are collected. That on the other hand, you don't want. A counterfeit bill is not legal. Can we shred it? Best thing to do is turn that in to the Secret Service. What do you want to do with these? I'd like to sell them. How much you want for them? Thousand dollars. Not gonna happen. No one knows who he was. You heard him say it was rare. Eight hundred. Four. I need to get five. Yeah, I'll give you 500 bucks. You want to write them up? There's collectors out there who love stuff like this. This is the holy grail of rock and roll. Agreement between Brian and the Beatles, giving him 25% of all royalties. And the agreement basically states what Brian Epstein's cut would be. He got a ridiculous management amount, 25%. The entire contract wasn't going to be valid until Brian Epstein actually got them a record deal. The contract is brought up, and Rick calls Brian Epstein a genius. If this were the real deal, it would have looked like Epstein would definitely get the job. That is correct. Brian Epstein was a genius. Transformed the Beatles from an unknown band into the biggest rock band ever. Played a large role in the Beatles breaking up. Original contract in front of me is surreal. Where'd you get it? From the person who actually bought it. Basically, I have the original receipt. It's got all the official seals, and it's in the original folder. It's never been altered. After asking the owner where he got it, the owner said that someone bought it in 2004. Okay, how much do you want for it? A million dollars. Um... I'm going to call my guy. I just want to make sure 100% cool. Can imagine someone spending a ridiculous amount of money make a brand new one of these? I totally understand. If this thing checks out, I will do what I have to do to get it. Now that's cool. I'm going to start off at the top with John Lennon. I'm looking for overlapping. I see no reason to believe it all. This is printed. These are definitely live signatures. So that's a good thing. I tried to pull out super early stuff that I have on file. John Lennon wouldn't sign John W. Lennon. He'd never do it for someone in person. Still seeing a lot of the same similarities, double ends here. So these are all very good signs. So is it real? I mean, based on everything I've seen here, there's no question that this is genuine. What's it worth? $500,000. Okay, he's asking a million. The one thing you have to be cautious of, in 2008, saw another sale of this piece. 2009, it was supposed to be offered through a raffle. The gentleman who did own this made a deal to raffle it off if it raised enough money. What about the 2008 auction? It didn't sell. When that price came down, it wasn't high enough for the seller. Okay, so it didn't meet reserve. Exactly. All right, so you're still stuck at a million? I don't see it. talking about history here. Very few people in the world have that much money. I pay you like 350 for it. I think I can probably get a half million dollars for it. Incredible offer, but I'll stick to a million dollars. Okay, you take the risk. I would go 350. That's cash right now. I would wait for another auction. I'm going to have to decline on the 350. Good luck with it. Thanks very much. I have some poetry here written by Jimi Hendrix. Been carrying it, never folded it. Jimi did this? Yes, sir. So how'd you get this? Started working with a relative of Jimi, Ricky Hendrix here. I became part of the family with them. They gave me this poetry. Just about anything he owned, signed, or touched can be worth money. The owner reads the writings on the paper to Rick. So what does this say? Then I grace thee with wing, O lovely and true, birds of heavenly, snow and crystals. Fly, my love, as you have before. Just one more. Jimi Hendrix, 1969. Have to be cautious. Ton of fakes out there. This is in awfully good shape. Rick demands a certificate of authentication from the owner and calls an expert to the shop to check the legitimacy of the item. Do you have any paperwork? There's a book coming out about lost poetry of Jimi Hendrix. No paperwork on being authenticated. I'll have someone check it out. 
it's as authentic, it's going to be very expensive. There's the expert takes a closer look at the signatures. The capital I, a very uh, squiggly line for the top bar. It's usually block type lettering. It's not quite what I've seen before. The handwriting is about the same size as the signature. He would always write in cursive. I've seen a lot of different problems with it and guarantee that this is 100% not authentic. The expert breaks the bad news to the owner, and no deal is made. I doubt your opinion. Can't go by certain stories, or anyone I can tell you right now that this is not authentic. I'm very sorry to tell you that. I know what it's meant to me all these years. I'm sorry, there's just nothing I can do with it. I don't trust his opinion when I've lived it. I bought amazing Gulf oil sign. I had it shipped to get restored. Pretty amazing, huh? It's big, man. Where are we gonna put it? Ask Rick if I got a great deal. Are these things collectible? What'd you pay for this? 1500 for the sign. No, he stole. Less than $3,000. Dale explains the amount of repair work this item is going to take to make it more collectible. Rip the frame up. The frame's gonna have to be re-welded. How much do you think it's gonna be? 10000 What if I put some neon on it? That'd probably be too expensive. Corey wonders how much he can make off the garage sign after it gets an upgrade. Do you want to do the dark blue? Whatever you think's gold, you're the guy. Okay. Look at this thing. Literally found a holy grail of garage sign. Look at this thing. I am a genius. So I get $25,000 on it. The sign is finally fixed, and Rick and Corey are amazed by how good it looks. What's up, Rick? I can't wait to show you. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you think? Don't make stuff like that. Remember how it was? So now you've got two sides. An original on that side. Then we're going to look at the other side. The blue. Oh, That's yeah. incredible, dude. How much can I get? 2700 How you do this kind of stuff. You never, ever disappoint. All right, I'll get you paid. Right. Uh, take care of it. I will get $25,000 for this after I put it on the internet. As my kids would say, this is lit. What do you have here? 1980s Coca-Cola toy. Real awesome, dude. Where'd you get it? I had a birthday party, Burger King, the gift that gave me. I think I'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> It's just sitting on a shelf. My wife keeps on at me. Stupid things I keep holding on to. Pretty cool. Chum talks about the concept of the toy robot and seems to like the item. In 1984, Tonka came out with GoBots and Hasbro came out with the Transformers. The same concept. I don't know too much about GoBots. The same thing as Transformers, but not as popular, you know. We released before the Transformers. This is going to appeal to people who collect Co, GoBots. Good condition, man. Yeah. Um, Chum asks the value of the item and the negotiations start. How much are you trying to get for it? 200. It's a go buy. 40 bucks on it. How about 150? Um, I go 75 on it. Okay. I got it for free. I think that's a pretty good deal. This woman walked into the pawn shop with her flintlock gun and saber. Rick checks it out. So what do you got here? A flintlock gun, a saber from the Ottoman Empire. Then. Okay. The woman says she has had this item for a long time and hopes they are worth the money. I got quite a long time ago. Oh, you're in your early 30s, right? I love you. I definitely <laughs> love you. Thank you. I've had them for a long time. I'm hoping they're worth money. Lots of money. Rick asks her where she got these from. She tells him she got them from her drum who she married. How did you get these? We were working in Turkey as musicians. They belonged to my drama. Later we got married. When he passed away, they became mine. Rick then asks if she knows anything about these items, and she tells him what she knows, which isn't so much. Do you know anything about the dagger or the flintlock? They're from probably 1700, something like that. Okay. Rick told her that the dagger seemed to be as old as she said, but it was in very bad shape. He also told her what he was most concerned about when it came to flintlock pistols. It looks to be that old, just in really bad shape. And with flintlock pistols, this right here, the push rod, yeah. that's what they pack down all the powder with. It, it just looks decorative. If it's decorative, it's not worth near as much, so it wouldn't be actual functioning gun. So do you mind if I call on a friend tell us what no. they were? Okay. Rick, you're absolutely correct, purely for decoration. This would be the everyman flintlock pistol. If you can imagine in that region, the soldiers, people doing trading, they would have a pair of these in holsters. They were on camels. And if you were to draw, that ramrod would catch on the holster, so they would have a separate ramrod wore around their neck to load these things. Does this form of pistol fit a pistol made in the Ottoman Empire? Yes, it is. Okay. The dagger. It's called a kinjal. Definitely seen use, even contact marks. Okay. So somebody fought with this. A soldier from the Ottoman Empire fought with this. So what are they worth? I'll start with the kinjal first. In its present condition, four to 600. And what about the pistol? Because the condition is so nice, there's still value there. Maybe 375 to 575. Thanks for coming in, Sean. So how much did you want for him? I have to take go home and think about it. I really don't know. No. Well, I understand you're not wanting to sell them. If you change your mind, we'll make a deal. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Cool. I have a Babe Ruth baseball card. Asking $65,000 a day, blow out would go probably about $45,000. Where did you get this? I found it in a shed in our backyard. It was in a lot box. My grandfather's. This is Babe Ruth. No one knew him as a pitcher. Started off as a pitcher. One year of pitching, the ERA was 175. His record of 60 homers in a season, over 30 years to break. Rick finally asks for an offer. 
Later, an expert stops by to take a look at the item. I find it a little weird, a newspaper advertisement on the back of it. Do you have an idea what you wanted for it? $65,000. This is the big thing. With, right. They've been faking these things since the 40s and the right. 50s. If it's real, you hit a jackpot. Going on, Rick. In baseball, there's no name bigger than Babe Ruth. It's an absolute must-have for any sports fan. What you have here is one of Ruth's earliest cards, a top five must-have for any serious collector. The expert takes a closer look at the card, and it will be discovered that the card is worth nothing. Corners and the edges are quite nice. Centering is almost dead on. Analyze the paper stock and just overall feel and texture. Now, as far as value on this, nothing. Not a real card. The whole texture's off. The coating on the surface, this is without a doubt a reprint. Ah, <sighs> It is what it is. Sorry, man. That close, but no cigar. You know, I'm just disappointed. The what do we have here? I have a photo of and letter by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. See, I would say close to 99% of Americans can't even name a poet. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> they talk about the letter and the photo. Basically, a letter, dear madam, whoever she was, wrote to him a photograph and some autographs. Okay, that is definitely cool. He was really was a superstar back then. Rick reveals it might not be written by the poet himself. The ink looks like from the period. How much were you looking to get? I was hoping to get 300 bucks for it. Um, a big concern I have here is, it wouldn't surprise me if this guy got hundreds of letters every day. I don't know if he could yeah. respond to every one of them. Sometimes they would have a secretary write the letter. Went to a secretary, you take care of those. Just give me a couple, I'll take care of those myself. An expert is called in. So I'm gonna follow the signature along here. The more I'm moving along here, it's very faint towards the end, using a quill to write with. Okay, so it's all legit. There's no question about it. So? The value on this piece, the framing, everything included, right around $1,500. Cool. cool. The seller gives a new price and they negotiate what you want for this? 300 bucks? <laughs> That's in the past. I think $300 is going to do it for me. I would sure like to see 900 bucks for it. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 700 bucks. I had your stuff authenticated for you. I think it's more than fair of me for $700. They agree on $700, and it's a deal. Yeah, let's do $700. Sweet. Thank you, sir. $700 isn't $900, but it's a whole lot more than $300. I may go back home and dig through the closets again. Oh, these are different. Tell me what you got. Two Russian Cossack Shoshka swords. You know the Cossacks? They were a big deal military organization. I mean, they were pretty badass. Corey discloses that the swords have been banned by the law. These have been banned by the Geneva Convention. You're not allowed to put these on a gun anymore. Oh, the bayonet? Multiple sides instead of just a knife. Go in you, they would make like a little star hole in you. Yeah, war was brutal back then. Corey asks for an offer and invites an expert to the shop to evaluate the swords further. Looking to get 2,000 a piece. So 4,000? Okay, um, don't know much about Russian history at all. Have somebody that can come down and take a look at them. Sounds good. What I have to tell you, what we have here, an interesting mix. Bayonet are right. The blades, the sheaths, reproduction. The shashkas are reproduction. They're modern. The expert takes a closer look at the blades, and they turn out to be artificial. You heard what Mark had to say. The reproductions, I was going to kind of have to pass on the whole deal. Take care. Thanks so much. I think they do look really cool. They'll make some great wall hangers at my house. They were used to cheat at playing poker cards. 13. You heard the guy. $900. $900. All right, tell. He'd be a better negotiator, but I think it was worth it. Rare Civil War era photograph? A little bit. Hey, how can I help you? I've got a um, Lamborghini dash clock. Would have been a lot cooler if you brought in the car. <laughs> I came down to the pawn shop today. I'd like to get around $3,000 for it. These were uh, made by Briquet in 1990s. It was a big deal when it came out. The first Lamborghini cars hit the market mid-60s. For the guy who's got everything, ultimate status symbol. While Rick and the owner start discussing the item, Chumley keeps making harmless jokes in between. Hey girl, my clock costs $10,000. <laughs> How much did you want for it? Rick asks the price and Chumley makes another comment which infuriates the seller. Well, I was thinking around three grand. They don't sell like the watches do. Appreciate just like the Lamborghini. <laughs> I don't think he's funny. Rick tries to negotiate the price, and after some bargaining, the deal was a success. How about 25? How about 22? 24. I'll go 2,300 bucks. Okay. Deal. I like the digital one. But... <laughs> if you can afford the car, then you can afford the... Oh, I got a gold bar I want you to look at. Corey takes a look at it and shows Rick. Rick asks the owner where he got it from. Hey, Pops, look at this. Where in the world did you get this? The owner told him he got it from his grandmother, who just passed away. Grandma passed away a few months ago. We were cleaning things out. We found this thing. 
Did uh, Grandpa happen to be a jewelry store robber or anything? <laughs> Rick tells him this is real gold, and it is worth more than enough. What do you think, Pops? It's gold. It's a big chunk of gold. Approximately $24,000 worth of gold here. Well, if it's worth 48, I want 48. We're talking different languages. 44? $32,000 on it. Give me more than that, it's worth 48. $35,000, and I don't even want to pay 